Next on the Broadway show, it's Funny Girl 2.0. Leah Michelle is here to talk about landing her dream role. Plus, back on the streets of the Bronx, Chaz Palminteri is here to talk about bringing a Bronx tale back to the stage for one night only. And we're going to take you inside the newly renamed James Earl Jones Theater and hear from the icon himself. All that and more on this latest episode of The Broadway Show. It's all about the best and brightest of Broadway each and every week here on The Broadway Show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. I'm so glad to have you with us. We're talking about Funny Girl 2.0. Leah Michelle is starring as Fanny Bryce, if you haven't heard. Six standing ovations on her first night in the part on Broadway. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. That's right, Tamsin. I sat down with the greatest new stars, Leah Michelle and Tova Felchu, and their onstage counterparts, Ramin Karamloo and Jared Grimes, to find out how things are going over at Broadway's Funny Girl. A little over a year ago, yep. I saw you <laughs> in the dead of summer. Broadway was not back yet. Right. You talked about your desire to come back to Broadway. Here we are. I can't believe only a year's <laughs> passed, and you are now having this huge Broadway moment starring in Funny Girl. What a journey. Did you see this happening at that point? No, <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's wild. A year ago, I had just moved back to the city with yeah. my family. I was still really in the thick of, of being a new mom and, and, and embracing that and embracing living back in New York again. And now here we are a year later. I mean, we've known about your love of this role Forever, and Rachel Berry's love of this brawl. Obviously, yes. you you did this mm -hmm. on Glee. Don't tell me not to fly. I've simply got to. If someone takes a spell, it's me and not you. Who told you you're allowed to rain on my parade? So it's very meta. Yeah. For all of us, is it also for you? Do you just talk about you doing Funny yeah. Girl on Broadway for years? Yeah. Funny Girl has been a part of my life in so many phases of my life. Yeah. You know, Michael Mayer told me to watch the movie in 2006 when I was going through a, a breakup. I was in Spring Awakening, and that's when I first oh, fell wow. Yeah, uh, that's how I watched Funny Girl for the first time. And then obviously, you know, with uh, the storyline that Rachel had, it was a huge part of my life yeah. when I was living in LA and when I was on the television show. And now here again at 36. So this role has been a part of my life throughout so many different seasons, but I've never felt more prepared, mm -hmm. more ready um, to, to play this part than I do now. Well, that's the thing about sometimes dreams get delayed for the right reason, right? And things happen to you at the perfect time. Yeah, and I was very content when, when we decided to not do it in 2014. Um, I, I was really okay. I played the part um, so much on Glee and sang the songs, and so I felt very at peace with it. It really was when I did the Spring Awakening reunion again uh, that I just felt this extreme desire to pr perform. People who don't even follow theater, everyone I see has asked me about you yeah. being in funny. I mean, this is, you, you're doing this under a microscope. I'm loving living in the bubble that is the safe home and space of this theater and this cast. Mm. If I did not know and feel the support that I have from everyone, this would be very scary for me. Mm -hmm. But I've been rehearsing with everyone for a while now. The cast who works so hard has given so much of their extra time to be there for me and to, to help me feel as prepared as I can be for, for this you know, experience. I think if I think too much about the magnitude <laughs> of, of, of this, it could be quite, quite scary. Everyone is talking about Funny Girl <laughs> right now. I mean, Leah getting cast in it, it's meta because of you know her character on Glee. It's sort of like the microscope is on Funny Girl right now. It's one of those things where you, your phone is like doo, 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 doo. It's just like, wait a minute, like my phone is, all of a sudden after Tuesday, my phone is like, you know, is, is, is really going, and yeah, it's literally people saying I'm coming back. You know, my response usually is, well, I don't even know. I don't even know if you, <laughs> you might not, you might have to wait a while to come back because, yeah. you know, people are really excited yeah. about the show. The phone. Doo, doo, <laughs> doo, 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 doo. That's exactly what the energy felt yeah. like in the theater, too, yeah. as soon as the curtain went up. It was like. Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> and Ramin, what is it like to romance Leah Michelle? Ask her, what's it like to romance? <laughs> <laughs> it's It's been great. And her take on that and what she's bringing for that aspect of the relationship has been really fulfilling yeah. and uh, exciting to explore even deeper. It's breathtaking to play every night, you know, and then watch her 
because I didn't. Uh, did you ever see Glee? No. I didn't no. Know. But I so know, this has been. Uh, uh, it's been great to that. see her. Uh, I've heard about her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what Gleeks meant. Someone said something about Gleeks. I'm like, what are Gleeks? Hey, I know. I'm fans. Yeah. Okay. There's, yeah. There's a whole bunch of terms from, from the, the And the amount of times I was getting messages, you're playing Rachel Berry. Who's Rachel Berry? <laughs> Who's this Rachel Berry? It's Fanny Brooks. But she's been phenomenal to work with. And just, again, it's, it's, high, it's brought a different energy to the, to the Nick and Fanny relationship and marriage, which is so important to this version of Funny Girl. I just had to explain to Ramin what a Gleek is. Oh my God, I know. Which, Ramin, which says just, a lot. He said a second ago, he was like, I think I should watch Glee. I was like, my husband's never seen Glee. You don't have to watch Glee. It's totally fine. But that says a lot about the environment that you're actually working in. You're working with theater artists on creating yes. a role instead of like this anticipation of Leah Michelle coming, you know, with with the baggage of being known as Leah Michelle and coming to do a show. You're just able to work on the show. Yeah, completely. But it is, you know, when Ryan Murphy came to see uh, yeah. my first night and he was so emotional, for me, I can't disregard, you know, how much Glee has played a part in all sure. of this. Ryan did bring, you know, Don't Rain On My Parade to that generation. Uh, our song was number six on the iTunes charts when I sang it then. Yeah. And um, and here we are now. So it's really just such a, a full circle moment in so many ways. You've sort of lived with the idea of doing this role for a yeah. long time, but actually doing it. Mm -hmm. What is it like actually being on that stage, doing it beat for beat? Like what's different about that experience? It's completely different. Ryan said to me on Tuesday after the show, he said, I knew act one Fanny, but I don't know act two Fanny. Mm. And I said, that's so funny because I've always known act one Fanny. The ambition, the drive, yeah. the energy. Yeah. I, I've always connected to that. But now having lived my life and having loss and heartbreak, mm -hmm. and deep love, marriage and a child, life's ups and downs. It's all of those experiences that I'm now bringing to this opportunity and this role. So it's completely different. It's different singing these songs live on a stage than in a recording studio. Mm -hmm. And it's completely singing different singing them as Fanny yeah. and it being in her shoes, not Rachel playing Fanny or, or singing <laughs> right. them in a concert. Yeah. Singing the songs is one thing. It's thrilling. It's incredible as a singer to be able to just plant your feet and sing these songs that are in my mind some of the greatest sure. musical theater songs yeah. in the world. But to bring the story to life also, um, I'm 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 literally having the time of my life. There's a lot of excitement about you being back on Broadway in this role. Are you feeling that from people? I'm so grateful for it. There was this atom bomb explosion on September 6th, Tuesday, <laughs> when of course they welcomed Leah. They welcomed me back to the stages that I have trod for 49 years, and in yep. May it'll be 50 years. You understand the importance of Funny Girl finally breathing life again on Broadway. What does this show mean to you, just as a theater fan, to have it back on Broadway? Well, first of all, I was in eighth or ninth grade when Mr. Eric, the head of the chorus at Scarsdale High, said, you have to see this show, children. I've just seen an extraordinary performer in a piece called Funny Girl, and I went to see it. You right? saw Streisand, wow, I, at yeah. the Winter Garden. Iconic. I saw Streisand. I think it is the greatest role written for a woman in the American musical theater, even greater than Mama Rose. It's not that Mama Rose isn't brilliant. Right. There's one, one center of the wheel, and that's Fanny Bryce. And if you fulfill the requirements of Fanny Bryce with the looming legend of Streisand, you're gonna hit a Grand Slam home run. And that is what Leah Michelle does, and that's what Julie Banco does on Thursday nights. This role, it, it was your dream role, it was Beanie Felstein's dream role, it was yeah. Rachel Berry's dream role. What is it about, and Tova just said it's, yeah. the, the, she thinks it is the greatest. It is. The greatest role. It is, it's the greatest role. It has everything. It has the drive, it has the arc, it has the the power and the tenacity and the songs and the, the most incredible um, arc, as I just said, of a, of a character that you see, you follow her along in this journey, yeah. you root for her. Anyone, Beanie, Julie, Barbara, mm -hmm. who has climbed the mountain of Mount Everest that is Fanny Bryce, 
is one of the most fearless women on this earth because it is such a hard role. And 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 I give anyone who has 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 done this so much credit. You know, when I came into to the dressing room and a beanie had left a little something on the mirror that just said brave and I was like that's that's it. You just have to be so brave to play this part because it's it's a mountain. But as a performer, I mean, I've been blessed in my life to have played some really incredible, uh, strong female characters, Ben Love, Rachel Berry, and to add Fanny to the list is, um, it's a great, great honor. Want to see more of Paul's interview? Head over to Broadway.com for an extended version. Broadway's longest running musical is saying goodbye. Phantom of the Opera will end its run in early 2023. Phantom has been a Broadway staple since 1988. The show will commemorate its 35th anniversary on January 26th, and the final curtain is set for mid-February. Phantom has been Broadway's longest running musical for over a decade. Another history-making night on Broadway. Angelica Ross just made her Broadway debut as Roxy Hart in Chicago. One of the stars of Pose in the American Horror Story, Ross is the first openly trans woman to play Roxy. And she's one of just a handful of trans performers to appear in principal roles on Broadway. Ross's Broadway debut was also the same night Chicago welcomed actor Brandon Victor Dixon to the cast. This is The Broadway Show and we're back in just a few. This is a Bronx tale, and it's his story. On the 35th anniversary of his classic one-man show, Chaz Palminteri is bringing it back to the New York City stage for one night only. And October 1st, for the first time ever, Chaz will do a post-show conversation with the audience. I had a chance to chat with Chaz Palminteri. 35 years. 35 years I wrote, I wrote a five-minute monologue about this killing that I saw when I was nine years old. I performed it for my theater workshop, then each week, I would write a little more and a little more, and then take out some, add some, and at the end of almost a year, I had 90 minutes of a one-person show. And you know the whole story, I got it produced, and my life changed. It's been 35 years, so I'm so excited to do it here in New York again, to be back on Broadway October 1st. But this one's gonna be different, dear. Okay. This one's gonna be different. When I say different is, this is the first time I'm gonna do a Q&A after the oh, show. Wow. We're going to sit down and people are going to ask questions about the one-man show, the movie, the musical, how all three happened. It's never been done before. It's the first time it's ever been done where the same person wrote the uh, one-person show, the movie, the musical, and started all three. Could you even conceive when you did that the first time, the first five minutes of <laughs> no. it? Could you even begin to conceive? It, what wasn't something you were planning to no, do? You were... I wrote it. I was hoping to get an agent. <laughs> you got more than that. <laughs> it sure did. I was, I was trying that. to get an agent at the time. So I said, I want to do something really spectacular. I had this idea of doing a whole movie on stage by myself and play all the parts. And people thought I was crazy. They said, that can't never work, you know? And I said, well, yeah, it'll work. They said, what do you, you can't change costumes, you can't. I said, no, I'm not going to change anything. I'm going to do it with lights and sound. And Some, it, somebody it, thought it worked. Somebody, somebody we know well. <laughs> we know well. We know very well, yes. Bob De Niro, when I wrote the script of Bronx Tale, the, the screenplay, Bob De Niro made that movie the classic that it is. I've always said that. You know, a bad director could mess up a great script. Mm -hmm. it, it was a great script, and, and Bob De Niro just made it sing, you know. And you put Arthur Avenue on the map as a result of that. Yeah. You know? I, I, Arthur Avenue, Belmont Avenue, I, I definitely put it on the map. I mean, it, it was a little famous before. There were some great actors that came out of the Bronx, too. But I think, uh, you know, I really made it kind of explode, yeah. Have you been back in a while? Are there, you still have the favorite places? You I still... go back all the time. You I do? go back once a month. Wow. I go to uh, Gino's Pastry if I want my really great cannolis. And I go to Mike Stelly and Casa Mozzarella and Title Brothers and all the great restaurants, Roberto's and Regaletto's and Enzo's. Uh, there's just great, if, great shopping there, great places to eat, uh, great people. You buy the real deal there. I mean, look, there's a, a Little Italy in Manhattan, which is great. 
But to me, the real Little Italy is in the Bronx. Now I want to talk about one thing, because we talked about this last time, your dad, and the words he said to you that changed your life. My dad said the words, the saddest thing in life is wasted talent. He told me that. He wrote it on a card, and he put it in my room, and I never, ever forgot that. I, it was one of those things, and that was the thing that made me write A Bronx Tale. I just got fired. I was working as a doorman. I ran out of money from my acting jobs. Uh, then I took a job as a doorman. Finally, I got, I got fired. Swifty Lazar, the famous agent, fired me because I wouldn't let him into his own party. Oh, God. <laughs> Well, he was really nasty to me. That's why I did that. All right, it's all right then. And then I went home and I looked at the card and I said, well, if they won't give me a great part, I'll write one myself. And I started to write about this killing that I saw. I mean, I always, I always carry a, a, one of those cards in my wallet mm -hmm. because in case I meet an actor or somebody and they stop me on the street and they, want, and they ask me, oh, you know, you inspired me. And I say, what's your name? I, say, I, take, I open up, take out my wallet. I, I take out the card and I... I said, let me write your name down. I said, here, saddest thing in life is waste of time. And I give it to him. So, I interviewed you a long time ago for a Bronx Tale. Yes. I gave you a card. Yes. Look at that. I have one on me right now. And I put tape and I carry it with me. That's fine. Well, you make sure you Ever children. since. You have, you have children. I don't have children. Oh, okay. Mm -mm. Well, you make sure you, you give that to someone. I have a little nephew know. that I'm going to pass this along to. Absolutely, you should. Those words change your life. Those words change my life. I have a, a really successful podcast, Chaz Parliamentary Show. I talk about success and about changing lives. And the people that call me and say, you've changed my life. And there's nothing more that makes me excited when I hear that. My son got off drugs because of your movie. He came to see your play. I took my son to see it, and now he has great grades. I go, oh, wow, okay. You don't, you don't know who your words affect, right? I am so humbled by it. I'm humbled by it. I mean, I, I always tell people, go on my podcast, and I do shout outs to people, you know. I said, you having trouble with your son? Call up. They can go to chazpalmateri.net, and everything is on there. The schedule of my one-man shows, okay. my podcast, my merchandise, chazpalmateri.net. Now let's talk one more Chaz Palmateri thing. Got a restaurant not too far from here. I got two restaurants. <laughs> I got one oh. restaurant not too far from here, right okay, here. Okay, right. Chaz Palmateri's, it's on uh, 46th Street, 30 West 46th Street, five-star restaurant, it's not no pizzeria, it's a great restaurant. How's it's, that feel to walk in there, walk past that door and see your name up there? You know what, That's, it's exciting. It's a, just yeah. a great, great restaurant. Look, I never say my restaurant is the best Italian restaurant in New York. I never would say that, because there's great restaurants mm -hmm. in New York. Is my restaurant one of the best, one of the top? Absolutely. And I have another one in White Plains, New York, in White Plains. Different than this one, a little more casual than the one in White Plains. We serve pizza there. But both of my restaurants, knock on wood, are doing great. And we've been in business now five years, and wow. it's doing great. The new musical, And Juliet, is about to drop its original Broadway cast recording. The musical is a new twist on the Romeo and Juliet story. It features pop songs by hitmaker Max Martin, including Baby One More Time, Roar, and Since You've Been Gone. The album is set to be released October 28th, the same day the musical begins previews at the Sondheim Theater. Welcome back to the Broadway show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Let's get back to it. Broadway's Court Theatre has been renamed in honor of the great James Earl Jones, a two-time Tony Award winner and also a recipient of the Tony for Lifetime Achievement. Jones first performed at the former Court Theatre back in 1958. I spoke my first line ever on Broadway for me in this theatre. <laughs> I was a kid, I forget how old I was. But I had one line in a play that starred Ralph Bellamy and Mary Fickett. It was called Sunrise at Campobello. My first and only line in the, in the play, Mrs. Roosevelt, supper is served. But I said, M -m 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 -m. I couldn't get it out. I'm a stutterer. Mary Fickett stood there patiently the audience knew I was having problems. 
I'm a young actor on stage for the first time, and I can't get my line out. But I, she was very patient till I got it out. Mrs. Roosevelt, supper served, then I exited. I repeated that line every night for a year. Renaming the 110-year-old building, the James Earl Jones Theater also comes with a major $47 million makeover and expansion. We'll be right back. That's going to do it for us, but until next time, check out the Broadway show Uncut wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is the Broadway show.